Welcome to IE TV Live. That is, it's energy. We're looking for the solutions that energize us. I'm your host, Bill Rogers. So we're back with the uh, the green lunch. Well, actually, we're moving past tea time into I think cocktail we're to the green hour. Happy hour. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. And uh, I thought to move us into this final section of today's green lunch. We would take a look at the piece that I created up here that uh, the the bald guy on climate change uh, created up here at the solar store. So let's take a look at what we discovered when we came up here about six months ago. Hey, bald guy on climate change, getting ready to head up to Dover, New Hampshire in the solar store, when suddenly it hit me. Ah, that's better. You know, great ideas. So the light bulb going off is not just the light bulb, but it's bringing that light bulb, as well as a bunch of other products, to Main Street, where we can buy them like juicy hamburgers. Pools, spas, toys, and solar energy. Well, you know, it's funny. When I went looking for a space, yeah. I, I happened to know one of the guys who owned the pool store, and I drove by here and I thought, gee, what a funny place for demo gear. And then I thought, wait a minute, pools need heat too. People come into the pool store looking for a hot tub or something, and then they realize how big their electric bills are after they bought that spa, so then they, they come in here. Well, this thing over here is probably the thing that garners the most attention. This is a solar hot water collector. This is called a heat pipe. These tubes are actually in a vacuum, and because they're in a vacuum, the water inside them boils at 80 degrees. We run water through that header up there and pull all the heat off the tubes, and voila, hot water. And where, where can you put that heat? Well, we put that heat in a, uh, in a storage tank that might look like this. This is actually an electric water heater. It's been made for years as a water heater, but it turns out to be a great solar storage tank because it's hmm. all plastic. It's warranted for life, so it's the last water heater anyone will ever buy. Yeah. And it's better insulated than anything. So we're not only making it for free, but we're storing it as efficiently as possible. Solar electric um, is getting more and more popular. Um, the, the pricing on this stuff is dropping like a rock, which is nice. Um, and there are lots of incentives. The state mm -hmm. of New Hampshire actually is going to have an incentive program. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. <laughs> Go figure. Um, we sell a few very specific appliances that save energy. Mm -hmm. We sell composting toilets, a lot actually, for people who have camps who don't want to put in septic systems. Yep. You know, why, why bother? Mm -hmm. So the whole, the whole philosophy of the store is to find ways for people to save energy and save resources. So if you look at, for instance, a conventional 65 watt floodlight. Under the light. Here's a 65 watt. We can tell from this little gadget here. Great. Okay. So Next. if we turn that one off and we go to a compact fluorescent, okay. now this, once, once it warms up, will be just as bright. Mm -hmm. But it uses one-third as much electricity. Actually, 12 watts 12 there. watts. The reason for that yeah. is that a conventional light bulb is 90% heat and 10% light. There's mm -hmm. a huge amount of waste mm -hmm. in how it makes light. These are just the opposite, 90% light, 10% heat. Now, if we go to the next generation of stuff, we go to LEDs. That's 8 watts. Wow. They've and really... Now, those are supposed to last 50,000 hours, too. The guy who started this organization, Dave Bonta, that's been his whole goal in life. Tell me about that. You buy a thing, it runs for 25 or 30 years and costs nothing to run. So Dave's whole goal is to, is to br start a whole bunch of these little stores all over the country. Mm -hmm. So the average person can walk into a store and learn about solar. So as Jack just told us, the whole idea of this was to use something, not, not just once and throw it away, but something that's going to actually save you money with time. And here with uh, Dave Bonta is Jack Bingham. So, Jack. Hi, Bill. How are you? Long time no see. <laughs> How'd you get into this wacky business? You know, I spent uh, 25 years as a commercial photographer and uh, actually embraced technology when it was coming along. I was, I, I'm one of, those, one of those fools you call an early adopter. Uh -huh. um, so I got into digital photography really early thinking, you know what, this is a way to stay in the business and, and, and continue and, and, you know, work it into a nice, comfortable retirement. And then technology got so simple that it pretty much eclipsed all the high-end 
applications, and you know now anybody can go buy a digital camera for a thousand bucks and make pictures, and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I spent about two years trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do with the rest of my life, and one of the things that kept nagging at me was, you know, I've taken pictures for all kinds of people that do all kinds of things that I didn't really like very much. I mean, I photograph guns, I photograph you know cigarettes, I photograph all kinds of things for various people, and it's like you know what I like to find something that actually has a long-term benefit. Pictures are great. I love pictures. I love making pictures. But um, let's find something that uh, is interesting. And my cousin Peter, who, who owns this house, um, said, "You know, you ought to talk to this guy Dave." And, and uh, the, the funny thing was, we have a we have a barn dance every year, and my cousin always brings somebody. And the first year he brought some guy who raises pigs, and the second year he brought Dave. <laughs> and we sat around breakfast, and I listened to Dave spin this yarn. And my initial thought was, "This guy's out of his mind." And it stewed for about six months to a year. And, and suddenly it was like, you idiot, you've been looking for something to do with your life that will be exciting and new and, and a challenge and beneficial. And you've, been, you've had it all this time. You've been staring at it. And I got home um, from this trip that we were on photographing log home somewhere. And I, and I called my friend Jay and said, OK, look, I got this really stupid idea. I think we should open a solar store. And he said to me, I've got two customers who want to do this. When do we start? And my initial <laughs> yes. thought was, uh oh, <laughs> yeah. here we go. Yeah. So you know, it was really, it was six months in the making, but the decision was made in about five minutes. It was like, you know what? That sounds like a really interesting thing. And the to think about doing this on your own seems to me to be crazy. How do you find the resources that know how to do this stuff? It is, despite the fact that Dave said it's, you know, it's you put these pieces together. There is some technical basis behind it, and you actually need to understand how to put the pieces together to give to your customers so they actually work correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, can't just, you can't just sell them stuff. I oversimplified <laughs> it to a certain point. I mean, we did put it in our house, uh, but if you looked at it, you might say, oh my God, you know, the, the, the electrician uh, ever look at this before? I mean, it's, it's, it was homemade. Yeah, but it the, did work, but uh, what Jack has said the, is The interesting thing about what Dave has done here is Dave had a long list of connections with people who have been making this stuff for 20 years and understood it. You know, hot water is a fairly dynamic thing. And we did a hotel in Bar Harbor, Maine, six months after opening. And the only reason we succeeded was that Dave had connections with manufacturers that mm -hmm. could actually say, do this, don't do that. Yes, you're right about that. The calculations are good. The calculations are bad. We never could have done that without the kind of connections that Dave actually provided. And, and to me, more than anything else, that's the benefit here. He's, he just knows, he knows the right people who have done things that allow me to stick my neck out and say, yeah, I know how to do that, well, or I'll figure out how to do that. Well, a lot of that has to do with uh, what I was saying, communication and collaboration. Uh, when I talk to people in the industry, I, I, I don't come off as a threat or a threatening person. I say, we're, we're trying to do this, can you help? And most people, if you ask them to help, will help. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the other interesting thing about this is if you look around what's going on in the industry, there's this massive mergers and acquisitions, trying to make bigger and bigger companies. When you, when you look at this model, it's actually very interesting because it's not one big thing. It's, it's 22 or 26 or whatever it is now, individuals investing their money. It's the same thing with a different mindset. Mm -hmm.